it's time to give up and you know it or at least you think you do otherwise why should you click on this video it doesn't really matter what it is to be exact the same principles apply to pretty much anything and in this video i'm going to try and help you not only find out if it's time to give up but possibly why you have to keep going the first question you need to ask yourself is why why is it that you should give up are the reasons legitimate or are they more or less excuses figuring this out is crucial in knowing how you should move forward so then what is the legitimate reason to quit legitimate reasons the first legitimate reason I think of is financial. If whatever it may be is costing you an extensive amount of funds and your future or perhaps even present self becomes at risk of not being to survive, then I would say that's very clearly a reason to quit. I want to share a concept that is very clear to me. If you want to achieve something great, it will almost always require a great deal of risk. And as the reward becomes greater, so does the risk. I mean, the saying is, it takes money to make money and that's not wrong. I don't want to explore this topic too in depth, but what I will say is you see risk in everything. Obviously, we think of things like gambling and casinos when we think of taking financial risk. But have you ever considered the financial risk in pursuing a post-secondary education? That is something I almost never hear spoken about. And I find it super interesting because it's seen as a very safe option or the option that you're more or less supposed to pursue in our society. When entering post-secondary school, you're taking quite the financial gamble on yourself. And don't get me wrong, I would much rather bet on myself than something of just pure chance. But you're still taking a pretty big risk. You don't know that you'll be able to not only complete post-secondary school, but to also be able to get a job from the qualifications you gained. I mean, just look at the amount of people that drop out post-secondary school or switch courses or they can't get a job with the qualifications they got. I'm going to leave that at that because as I said, this could be its very own video topic. I tell you this not because I want you to think that I'm anti-risk because I'm not, but if you're going to take risk, you're at risk of failure. And at some point, you're going to have to know when to quit while you're still up. Okay, this is the part where I give my story. I have a few examples of me taking risks in hope of pursuing different careers. So let me give you some context as to how I ended up trying these things. I want to say a little bit over a year ago, I was really stumped on what I wanted to do now that I graduated. I thought about doing college and trades and basically just all the generic things we were pushed towards during school. But I had the thought of what if while I was young, I tried different things before going down that generic road. Now, don't get me wrong. There's absolutely nothing with the generic road, but I personally just wanted something different for myself. So I grabbed my phone and I started looking up ways to make money online, mostly looking up online as I'm not a very social person. And if you do this search today, you're probably going to see the same things that I saw back then. The first one that stuck out to me was drop shipping. Wait, 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 hear me out. When I saw it, I really liked the idea of it because it would get me into social media and marketing, which are both things I thought of pursuing in post-secondary school. I also realized that it had a really low cost of entry as you really only had to pay for the Shopify website, which was like $40 a month. And I only ended up paying for like one month. And to be honest, there might've even been free alternatives, but Shopify was the one I went with. So I used Shopify and I set up a website, which is another skill that I got to learn. And then we came across the second time I used money, which was for ads, which I ran ads on TikTok, which didn't end up doing much for me. I guess it was a fun experiment that cost me like 20 bucks. But again, that wasn't even necessary and I didn't even have to do that. Overall, that experience was pretty low risk and I really only lost a couple bucks and a good amount of time as I spent a lot of time promoting my product on TikTok as well as just doing a lot of research to try and do this in the most efficient way and best way possible. Out of that, I actually only ended up making up one sale. I actually didn't make profit on or I guess I made one cent on it because I messed up the pricing, which is kind of funny. I definitely don't regret doing this as I got to play around with social media, marketing, recording, video video editing, graphic designing even, and just a lot of really fun and useful skills. And in a way, it ended up being a gateway to doing all of this. So obviously, I decided to drop the drop shipping as it didn't make me much money and it was costing a lot of time. And I just decided that my time would be better put towards something else. Of course, I tell you all this because it leads back into legitimate reasons to quit. And I guess looking back on drop shipping, I could have continued with it. Again, I didn't feel like I was getting a good grasp on it. And I just thought I would rather put my time towards different things. As I also realized that my feelings on dropshipping were kind of mixed. Dropshipping is low-key kind of scummy. I guess it's kind of a gray zone. You're selling products at a higher price than what they're worth, but you're also the person that put in all the effort into the marketing to bring the product to the person. So I'm not too sure about all that, but I'm kind of glad that I don't do it anyways. The next story, unfortunately, is a really good example of knowing when to quit. As the first one was a bit more iffy and you definitely could have argued that I could have stuck with it, this one, I think I made the right call. Once I wrapped up with dropshipping, I decided to give this new thing that I found a try, which was also on the website suggestions, which happened to be 
day trading. Now, day trading was something that I had heard of a little bit, but to be honest, I had no idea what it was. Now, I'll give you a little rundown on what day trading is, not the in-depth one because it's super complex, but essentially what you do is you buy a stock at a low price and try and sell it for a high price because stocks are always going up and down. This is super risky, which is why you can make a lot of money and you can also lose a lot of money. I also want to preface that I thought I did my due diligence as when it comes to these things, I try to do my research and put in all the effort that I need to to learn how to do these things properly. Day trading is one of those things that can take years and some may even argue that even after years, there's nothing to learn. It's just luck. Not going to get into that argument. Moral of the story is I definitely didn't do my due diligence as I had thought and it ended up costing me because with day trading, you can actually do it in a simulator, which is basically just using fake money. And I definitely could have spent a lot more time doing that. Now, honestly, in hindsight, even looking at day trading, I don't know if I could have done it any better. Realistically looking at it, I just think it had to be one of those things where I learned the hard way because this was something that was going to take a lot of time and I wasn't willing to do that. And because of that, I got burned. Long story short, I lost some money and I also kind of realized that this was a dangerous hobby to be involved in as although I don't fully agree that it's gambling, I realized that I myself couldn't tell if I was enjoying it because of what it was or because the same reason someone enjoys gambling, like a slot machine. Realistically, I didn't have the knowledge to make the decisions I was making. So it essentially was gambling, at least for me, which is why I had to quit. If anything ever feels like it's not in your control, I would heavily advise that you quit it immediately, especially when it has to do with the financials. Moving on from those two lovely stories that I definitely cherish with all my heart, let's continue the discussion on legitimate reasons to quit. The next thing I think about is health, which I'll break into two topics being mental health and physical health. Let's start with mental health. Mental health is a very touchy subject as there's a lot of varying opinions on it and our knowledge on mental health is still growing every day and we have lots to learn. As someone who's had their own battles with mental health, I'll try to talk about this with the care and the love it deserves. If whatever you're pursuing is taking a big toll on your mental health or maybe you just feel like your mental health gets in the way of whatever you're pursuing, I believe you need to stop whatever you're doing and deal with your mental health first or at least slow down if you can. No matter what you decide, you have to make sure that you set aside time to deal with this. Circling back to the day trading a little bit, I wouldn't say this was just something that was financially burdening me, but also something that was mentally burdening as losing caused me some distress. And it only added to a time that was already pretty difficult for me mentally, as I already felt like a failure for not pursuing post-secondary school. And this kind of just made everything a bit worse. It became abundantly clear that I needed something that would start building me up rather than tearing me down. Since then, I feel like I've gotten better with the whole feeling like a failure thing. And if you didn't know already, I made a video on it and you should definitely check that out if it applies to you after this video or now and then come back to it. I don't know. Now I feel like I have a more positive outlook on life and no longer really feel like a failure, just realizing that I'm on my own journey. I can't speak to all different types of mental illness and I'm not going to try. But what is obvious to me is that mental illness requires a lot of attention and you have to take care of it with a lot of love. So please make sure you do that. Physical health, on the other hand, is also very important as it can link directly to your mental health as well. If you can't find time to stay in shape and eat well, then I think you should reconsider your priorities. Health isn't just about trying to live as long as you possibly can, but it's about increasing your quality of life throughout your entire life. And if your health is decreasing, then so is your ability to enjoy life. And that's a big problem. Another different type of physical health is major injuries. For those of you who like sports like me or are pursuing sports, make sure to treat all your injuries with the respect that they deserve, as not dealing with them properly can drastically lower the quality of your life. I naturally think of concussions and just basically any type of brain injury. So I once again just advise you please take care of your body because you only have one of them. Moving on from the legitimate reasons as to why you have to quit, let's move into the excuses, which I feel like might apply to a lot more of you. To properly deal with the excuses, it takes a lot of self-awareness, responsibility, and accountability. Without these, you'll never be able to call yourself out for making excuses, meaning you'll never have a chance at success. The reason I say self-awareness is really important and not just responsibility and accountability, because a lot of people, including myself, sometimes don't realize when they're making excuses. And not all us have someone in our life who can call us out when we're doing this. Sometimes we're our own worst enemies and we sometimes gaslight ourselves into believing what is clearly an excuse is a legitimate reason to quit. I'm never afraid to call myself out, especially on this channel, as I make a lot of mistakes. And realistically, I probably will never stop making mistakes as I'm not a perfect person and I'll never be. And that's okay. As long as each day I strive to be better. I recently had a surgery. I'm all good, by the way. This surgery made it so I had to spend a lot of time in bed and it was advice that I didn't move around too much. And being honest, I use this as a way to be a bit lazy. I would have something that I was perfectly capable of doing 
that I would make my girlfriend do instead. Again, not proud of it, but it's true. Calling myself out is only half of it, as I also have to take responsibility by doing whatever it is that I didn't want to do. I don't want to be lazy, and being lazy isn't doing me any good. So learn to not only call yourself out for this behavior, but to also have the responsibility to do. And make sure you don't just try, as I see trying as an excuse to not do. As Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try. Trying gets you partway to where you want to be, whereas doing gets you all the way. And finally, if you decide to try and you don't do, you have to be able to take accountability for it, as blaming others will do you no good. Without accountability, there's no growth. Without growth, there's no success. Now, I want to go over some excuses that I see a lot slash I do myself and talk about how I think we could deal with it better. I'm tired. Let's be real. This one is probably the most common amongst all of us, and I'm definitely guilty of saying this one too. If you're tired, you have to ask yourself why, because we want to fix this. Lots of you can probably fix your sleep schedules. Getting enough sleep and sleeping consistently is the key, but I won't lie, I struggle with this as well. But importantly, I have the accountability to realize it's my fault and it's my job to fix this. Now, if you suffer from something legitimate like insomnia or anything else medical, I feel you, and this would fit under a legitimate reason. But you still have the responsibility to try to deal with it now and not later, so that your life can move on. I don't want to turn this video into a video about how to get better sleep, but I will say there's a lot of resources out there, you just gotta look for them, and not even really hard. So please, use them. And if all else fails and you can't fix your tiredness for whatever reason, I know it may be tough and you probably won't want to do it, but you have to learn to try to work through it. I mean, I wrote this script while tired and not wanting to write it. Sometimes that's just life. The next excuse I want to talk about is I don't have time. Unless your schedule is loaded to the absolute max, then sure, you can have a pass. But what I know is a lot of people have time, but they just don't want to use that time for whatever it may be. I guarantee if you check someone's phone who claims to have no time, you'll find their time there on various apps, wasted. And to those who don't have time, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Now, there's millions of excuses we could talk about and go over, and it would probably take a whole day to go over every individual one. But I guarantee they share a lot of similar characteristics as the ones we've gone over, and they probably require the same solution. But I do want to discuss one more, and that's motivation. Motivation is a very interesting topic, as I myself struggle with motivation a lot. It's something that can come and go, sometimes really strong and sometimes just be non-existent. But something I learned is motivation is something that you can go out and acquire. Sometimes it's through media, although I don't recommend that you spend all your time just watching motivational edits. For me, I found my motivation through drawing a mind map and figuring out what my true desires in life were, and most importantly, the why of what I wanted to do. The why can come in many different shapes and sizes. For me, it was wanting my own family when I'm older. Things like owning a home and being able to travel the world, and being able to help those who've helped me along the way, and obviously various other things. I think it's important that we remind ourselves of these, because they're very easy to forget. I personally feel as though it's best to write it on a piece of paper and have it somewhere that you can easily access if you ever need it. Once again, I want to preface that motivation can sometimes be linked to mental health issues that are out of our control. So please, if you feel this way, even if it's just the slightest bit, make sure you get that help. Or of course, I would advise that you seek professional help as well, as we all have problems and not all of them can be dealt with ourselves and sometimes we need help. My last bit of advice is just to get the ball rolling, because sometimes you find that motivation just by moving. Moving. So just make sure you're not just sitting around and hoping that the motivation just randomly comes out of nowhere and hits you in the head because it might not. And if you want to hear more of my thoughts on getting the ball rolling, I covered it more extensively in my last video. If you could take one message out of this video, it would be self-awareness, responsibility, accountability. With these three, you'll go far in life. And always remember, your life is in your hands. You've got this thing called free will. It's an awesome little gift that we receive. And how you use it is up to you. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll really like this next video on something you may be pursuing that is killing you. Or check out my last video on why you may be feeling like a failure and how you can fix it.